Well, two kilograms of lunar soil can fill two coffee jars like this. So why is it useful to collect all this dust and debris? First, it can help us better determine the age of the moon and other planets based on a method called crater counting. Yes, you're right. Just count how many craters of various sizes or help scientists estimate how old a planet's surface is. This method can work based on the assumption that a newer surface should have fewer impact craters, while more heavily cratered terrain would generally be older. But you may notice the weakness here. Counting craters simply allows us to calculate relative ages. For example, we can figure out that the heavily cratered lunar highlands are older than a dark lava plain, but scientists can measure the actual age in years. And that's why we need lunar samples, because they can be precisely dated back on Earth using radiometric technology, so that we can use the date of samples to calibrate the results from crater counting. But so far, all the samples brought back by the Luna and Apollo missions come from regions up to three billion years old. But we don't have any benchmark from more recent periods, and that gap could be filled by chunk of five new samples. Because it will touch down in the northern part of the ocean as Procellarum, the vast lava plains that are believed to be as young as only one billion years old. In addition to that, we should be able to better understand the moon's volcanic activity. Previous samples suggest it stopped around three billion years ago, but chunk of five sample, which may contain volcanic lava formed just one billion years ago. Could reveal that the moon was still active for a longer time than expected. Further, scientists hope the samples will tell us what fueled this thermal activity for so long. Lunar soil also hosts the secrets of the sun. Unlike Earth with its magnetic fields as protective shield, the moon has been exposed to the bombardment of solar wind. So particles injected from the sun throughout different time periods will be buried in the different layers. Of lunar soil, that will give us the chance to learn about the changes to the sun through this history. And don't forget, our research on lunar samples today will be a fundamental for the potential lunar base in the future. For example, we have already found lunar soil and rocks contain hydrogen, which is left behind on the surface by the solar wind, and also a type of mineral called ilmenite. If you put those two things together to react, you can produce. Water, so we're one step closer to being able to function in space without needing basic resources from Earth.